good morning, actually afternoon, to all of my lovely friends. I'm, I'm running a little late here today, but that's okay. It's Sunday and we're just taking it easy this Sunday morning. Hello everyone, Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. It is day 10, day 10 of my holiday gift extravaganza and I am having so much fun with you guys and I am thrilled that you are having fun too and enjoying reading all the the wonderful memories and stories that everybody's sharing. We have seven more days so lots of more goodies to give away. Let's see yesterday's question do you wrap the presents? Oh I have to say this is from my my friend E. Lynn. She actually isn't look, watching my gift extravaganza um, videos, but she does watch my regular floss tubes regularly. She's a friend from Virginia. Um, she has named me Janta Claus. So my name from now on for the rest of this is Janta Claus. <laughs> I love that. I thought that was so cute. So yesterday's question, do you wrap presents? I would say it's about 50-50 with whether you wrap, not wrap all the presents, but wrap the Santa presents or not. And I'd say it's about 50-50 um, of people who wrap the Santa presents or don't wrap the Santa presents. Now, I have to say some of you are very clever about this. Now, some of you that wrap the Santa presents, you will, you wrap them in special paper, different paper. Some of it's themed. Um, every year you may change the theme. But you're very careful to make sure it's not the same paper that you wrap the other presents with because kids do notice these things apparently. I had several of you comment that your kids said the following year, this is the same paper that, oh, well, it, there was one that said, this is the same paper that Santa used last year. And also another one that said, Santa used the same paper that you did, mommy. <laughs> That's too much work. <laughs> it's too much work to remember it all. Um, some of you are clever enough to say that Santa brought you the presents early so you could wrap them. Um, I forget. Oh, I meant to note down and I didn't. One of you have, has a, um, or had a, a whole story that went, um, Santa brought the presents early and, um, that didn't mean they were necessarily guaranteed to get them. If they misbehaved, the presents would be going back. And so for the most part, they were good, but there was one year that the kids did test the, the theory. I guess two of her boys were fighting. And so they didn't get any presents, any presents from Santa under their tree. And I guess, needless to say, there was much weeping. So she had them write a letter to Santa apologizing for misbehaving and promising never to do it again. But she still withheld the presents for three days because, you know, Santa had to bring them back. So, smart mama. That, that, that's some tough love for you, boy. And she said they never misbehaved again. <laughs> you guys have, have ways of um, making sure that kids like me don't find out which presents are, are theirs, whether it's different paper for different kids or coded numbering system or, um, just no tags at all and they don't find out until Christmas morning who's is who's. I am just so impressed <laughs> with how smart you people are. And some of you um, go all out with your wrapping and the bows and the ribbons and decorations, tags, and others not so much. I'm one of the others not so much. I didn't mind wrapping the presents. I liked wrapping the presents. But we found the first year after we got the cats, so that we, the cats came to live with us. They were born at the end of February, so they didn't come to live with us until, what, 12 weeks later, I think. So March, April. So that Christmas, did my normal wrapping our Christmas presents, putting the bows. I only used the sticky bows, you know, that came in a bag. The next morning, those bows were just a tattered mess. <laughs> we never used bows after that because, yeah. So yeah, Christmas presents and wrapping and all that fun stuff. I, have again, enjoy reading your comments so much and learning great tips and tricks too. So 
who is the winner of the pretty gingerbread scissor fob? And I have to say, I think it was rather apropos that I had a gingerbread scissor fob the day after we talked about cookies. That was rather clever of me, right? Totally unplanned. I'm never that good. All right, our winner of the scissor fob is Deb G. And she says, I wrap all the presents in a theme color. See, she's one of the ones that does themes. Every year is different. And this year I'm making my wrapping match my daughter's theme. So her daughter must be carrying on the tradition. That is awesome. Deb, congratulations. Um, if you, I will be commenting on your comment as always for you to email me with your mailing address. And I will be passing that on to Jen Upton. And that's who you will be getting the gift from. All right, so today, December 6th, our, um, our gift today is two Grime Guards from my friend Darlene, Darlene Llewellyn Konechny. Her business is called DLK Crafts. She makes Grime Guards and um, for Q-snaps, for stretcher bars, for hoops. Um, she gifted me one a while ago that has been protecting my farewell to anger quite nicely for quite a long time and will be continuing to protect it for quite a long time. This is an 11 by 11 Q snap that it's around. So, and of course she knew that my favorite colors were turquoise and it has the tropical theme because I was still in Hawaii when she sent it to me. So I love that. So D Darlene, um, she wrote up a little blurb for me to share with you of, of her business and what they do. Her and her husband work on this together. Let's see. So we make grime guards for Q-snap frames, hoops, and stretcher bars. The grime guards are made wide enough to assist in managing excess fabric. Now you can see it does hold it in somewhat, but a hey, this is heaven and earth's design, farewell to anger. Um, and this is 25 count. So it, it doesn't necessarily cover up all of the fabric, but it does, it does what I need it to do, basically. <clears throat> Thread drops can also be found in the shop from time to time as they sell out quickly after finding the time to make them. Other cross-stitch related items can be found in the shop as new, as new ideas and materials are found. Through the end of December, $1 from each Grime Guard is being donated to the Alzheimer's Society of Toronto. So if you're in need of Grime Guard or you want to get a gift for a stitchy friend, now is a great time to do it. Um, and she will donate, like she says, to the Alzheimer's Society. She does live in Canada, in case that wasn't clear. Um, okay, I'm giving away two prizes of one standard size grime guard. So standard size being, um, I believe, being either 11 by 11 or 17 by 17. So one of those to two winners. I will work directly with the winners to determine the size and the fabric that they would like. The prizes for Canada and the U.S. only. <coughs> Excuse me. The selection of fabric varies as we try and choose fabrics that we like, that are practical for this use, and that we think others will enjoy. New fabrics appear in the shop as time permits, and sometimes the fabric appears based on assisting a customer when doing a custom order. We have been known to purchase fabrics way ahead of when they appear in the shop. You should see our stash, she says. DLK Crafts is a hobby business, so timing of product addition to the shop varies based on other time commitments. They do have their own business as a um, consult, a, a small consulting business, she says, in real life. So, you know, their time is not necessarily their own. So, <coughs> two winners, 11 by 11 or 17 by 17 Grime Guard. You will be dealing directly with Darlene to, um, to work out the size and the fabric of your choice. So that's kind of fun. All right, so today's question. Let's see. All right, so we talked about our inside decoration, or we talked about our tree decorations. Um, I want to talk now about your outside decorations. Do you go all out for outside? Did you used to go all out and find now that time just, and, and, and it's not as easy to do, so you don't do it as much? And who is in charge of decorating for outside? So I love lights on a house. 
I would have lights everywhere if I could. I am kind of the director of operations and I do what I can on my own, but Mike is the heavy lifter when it comes to outside decorations. And he doesn't like it very much. <laughs> He's sitting over on, there on the recliner laughing at me. So he liked it even less in Maryland. He it wasn't too bad with it in Florida because it was warm, <laughs> but he hated putting up lights in Maryland because it was so cold. <laughs> he did it for me. <laughs> but he wasn't happy with it. <laughs> but yeah, I love, I love outdoor decorations. I loved doing the um, riding around and seeing the different neighborhoods. You know, some neighborhoods had more lights and there was always a place in Annapolis. Um, the, I was down on the bay, down at the, at the park on the bay, I think. I don't remember. Um, don't remember the name now but that would do a whole, you know, drive through Christmas lights thing. And we always did that and just drove through the neighborhoods. Now where I was, where I grew up in Western Pennsylvania, um, when I was a kid, it was a big deal to put out Luminaria and the girls, Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts sold them. I have a feeling we sold them at our church as a fundraiser at some point. That's kind of tickling in my memory somewhere. But, you know, on Christmas Eve, before you went to the Christmas Eve service, we would line our, our yards and our driveways, but usually just all along the street with the luminarias. Now, for those that don't know, the luminarias are just the brown pl plastic bags and you would put sand in the bottom and you would have these thicker candles that you would set in the sand and light. And the idea is that it would light the way for the Christ child to come that come into the world. And I loved driving the neighborhoods that were just lined with the luminarias. Now you could pretty much, depending on how much wind there was or what type of weather there was, you could pretty much guarantee that by the time we came home from the Christmas Eve service, either most of the candles would have blown out or bags would have caught on fire. <laughs> I mean, you just never knew what to expect by the end of the evening with luminarias, but it was a, it was a, such a pretty sight. So, um, that's my reminiscing for today. Again, the Grime Guards, I will be linking, um, Darlene's Etsy shop below for you to check out. Like I said, if you have a gift you want to get for yourself or someone else, um, she's donating $1 to the Alzheimer's Society, and that's always a good cause. So, Let's see. I think that is all. Um, until tomorrow, guys, you have a wonderful Sunday. For those of you that are in the future, <laughs> have a wonderful Sunday evening into Monday. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow, guys. Love you. Take care. Bye-bye.